This is a program where I give you my various opinions and thoughts regarding current events. Some of it is news, some of it is just regular run-of-the-mill BS that we find day-to-day in our streams. Breaking judge in Manafort case orders government to hand over unredacted Rosenstein memo within two weeks. Yeah, so for the first time, a sober judge just realized, wait a minute, this is a farce. Look, you can't just keep not giving out, uh, you can't just keep withhold, withholding information when uh, the government that is meant to build committees to have oversight over your department. You can't just not give them the information. I mean, that's silly. And even the judge thinks so. Boom. Dirty cop Mueller seeks delay in junk Russia bot case after indicted company calls his bluff. Yeah. So here's the thing with Mueller. With Mueller, he's been running a special counsel looking for Russian collusion with the Trump campaign. So he hasn't found any. And he's expanded his witch hunt, and that's what it is. It's a witch hunt. Uh, he's expanded it to people who know or had worked with or had dealings with Donald Trump. Perhaps prior to or during the last election. In which he won handily, by the way. Yes. Um, and so what he's doing is he has gone beyond the scope of his mandate. His mandate is for investigation into connections between the Trump campaign and Russia. And so now he's branched out into any possible malfeasance. And now, since he has found nothing untoward in Donald Trump's dealings, uh, especially with his campaign dealings, he is now going after the person of Donald Trump, attempting to essentially trap him in a perjury trap, which is also outside the scope of his mandate for the special counsel. So a judge has figured this out. He's looked at it and goes, no, you really don't have any, uh, you really don't have any reason to be going after any of this. So he's essentially calling it and just saying, you've, you've found no evidence and you haven't, you've basically got just a few weeks to come up with actual evidence to keep this case open or else this, this special counsel is closed. So it looks like this is going to be a bust, a huge bust. They didn't find nothing. They didn't find Jack. They didn't find anything. They didn't find Jason Bourne. There was no, there was no collusion. You know, there's no, it's not there. It's not there. If you think that Donald Trump is is going to get to the level that he is at as a wealthy man without, uh, and if you think that he's a rube, you think he's dumb or stupid, you are seriously miscalculated and underestimated that because you don't get to uh, amass the wealth that he has amassed by being fast and loose with the rules. Now, there are people who, who obtain their riches that way, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Clinton Foundation, and the ilk, they're same like people, uh, and they get it given to them, okay? So they've never, they don't, this is not money that they earn, okay? People just dump, the, dump money into this Clinton Foundation, which is looking more and more like a front for, <laughs> for human trafficking and and human trafficking of the worst kind for sexual purposes and other. Okay. So, so you don't have that with Donald Trump. You have a businessman, a builder, he's built uh, skyscrapers and, and, you know, he's put up a billion dollars his own money for the Chicago tower, Chicago Trump tower. That was before anybody even bought any of the apartments on the, on the place. So the guy does business in, in, in very large ways. And so you don't move around that kind of money without knowing what you're doing. Okay. So what that does is that brings out of the woodwork all of these, I like to call them Klingons. If you're a Star Trek fan, you will know that Klingons were most of the time viewed as the enemy, the aggressive enemy. But in this particular case, a Klingon that I'm referring to is a person like Stormy Daniels. Stormy Daniels is a Klingon in the sense that 
What she wants to do is extort Donald Trump, okay? That's what she wanted to do back when she was having whatever dealings she was having with Trump's attorney, Mark Cohen. These people come out of the woodwork because they know that if they get enough trouble, they stir up enough trouble for this person who is rich, who is wealthy, that that person will, will simply just want them to go away because it damages their ability to make, continue m making large amounts of money. So they oftentimes will just say, look, without admitting any guilt, here's a, here's a little bit of money, you walk away from this, and it never comes up again. And pretty typically, uh, it's extortion. It's, that's what it is. She's an extortionist, okay? Uh, that's what that is. And, if, so, and the, the reason why I'm able to say that, unequivocally, the reason why I'm able to say that is because if there was some form of untoward sexual encounter between these two, and, and this is what this woman does. She gets paid to have sex with people, okay? And so you could see that why, the why is she giving something away for free? You know, there's no quid pro quo for her. And this is how she would think. Okay, that's one thing. Uh, but the other thing is, uh, especially, and you have to remember this, especially with all of these types of allegations, especially with the ones where they were rape allegations or things like of that nature, uh, unwanted sexual advances and, and things like that. The common theme has been, uh, in all of these cases, the hashtag Me Too stuff, is that no one ever called the police. No one ever called the police. Not one of them ever called the police. I mean, and, and there are people out there who can win cases that are essentially just a he said, she said. So she brings an allegation, he says it's false, and there's no way to really prove what happened. But there are special instances where the person who was falsely accused actually ends up doing time over it and be found, you know, found guilty because it's about a believability issue at that point. It's a nasty thing. It's a nasty business. It has no place in our society. But here we are. We have these people who continually keep doing it. And it hurts the chances of people seeking actual justice for an actual crime when people lie about something like that. So it's a very, very hideous thing, but it's a very real thing. And it's a thing that a lot of rich people have to deal with all the time. They get extorted by people all the time. Uh, someone will walk into their building and slip and fall on a floor that was polished too much. And that'll be their, oh, nope, uh, you, you got to pay up because you, your guy polished the floor too much. But they're out there, they do that. So with the sexual things, the sexual encounters, not one of these people, you know, called the police. The police are specially suited to actually investigate crimes of that nature. So if there was any unwanted sexual conduct between uh, individuals there that are in a position of power or authority, or in Harvey Weinstein's case, he was abusing the, the potential of, of employment and holding that over people's heads. I say people because I don't know. It seemed like everybody was pretty upset that this guy was caught doing this. And now they're all shocked. They're like, oh, my God. And now everybody's like, oh, yep, uh, that, that happened to me too. And now the rest of us in society are looking at them going, I, I, you know, I, there are certain movies that I cannot watch now because I, there are people in there who, were, who had a situation with Weinstein and didn't report it, didn't say anything about it, didn't report it. And them being in these movies is payment, <laughs> you know, in a sense, it's payment for them and their careers built on it. But essentially all you are is just a whore because you didn't, you didn't stop that from happening to someone else. Not one of them ever stopped that from happening to the next person. So now they all <laughs> are a big group of people who have these award shows that now they're patting each other on the back saying it's okay. Like, you know what, you know, yeah, I had to, you know, I had to perform, you know what I mean? Quote, I had to perform to get work. Me too, me too, me too. So now they're all looking at each other in shock because they're realizing, oh, uh, so that was everybody. So that was a real thing. You couldn't get into the business if you weren't on your back first. <laughs> um, so yeah, it has ruined movies. I don't want to see a lot of these actors and actresses because they're, they're trash. It's garbage. And, and now their award shows are nothing but, you know, them having that stupid look on their face like, I can't believe we, got, we all got caught and it's not our fault. It is your fault. It most certainly is your fault. The minute you traded the, your body, uh, your sexual favors for a successful career, it is your fault. And when you did that, you didn't, when you were confronted with that situation, you didn't do what you were supposed to do. None of you did. So it's all of your faults <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. So we've gone through that and it's all to address this issue of extortion or extortive behavior by people. And I know I've said it before in other podcasts, but 
the tr- that's the truth of the matter is that none of these people, when they, uh, the Gloria All Reds, all of their people that they march out, none of them ever, ever dialed 911. You know what I mean? Not one of them has the story of I had to go home and shower for days, you know, <laughs> scald myself and hop out or whatever. You know, they never have any of those stories. They have these weird fake versions of them where they give a little fake tear while they're lying to you. And it's so, it's so incredibly fake. It's like a childlike lie. Like everybody that's an adult knows that the kid's lying. But the kid is just like wide-eyed, like, no, I'm not. And that's these people. That's these people. And it's absurd. There's a, there's a, a level of ridiculousness to it that just makes me not have any respect for any of those people. John Kerry. So a lot of people are talking about John Kerry because apparently this plastic face guy just won't go home. Okay. He's no longer in office. He left with the Obama administration. They're gone. So now this guy goes around essentially trying to be a shadow government and starts planning and plotting and doing all this other stuff with like the Palestinians and the Iranians. Now I could understand being a little upset that the next administration that comes after you you know, may dismantle a lot of years worth of work. But that's not what we're seeing here. What we're seeing is uh, an active coup against the foreign policy of the president and, and an active coup, a treasonous coup. You can't do that. Uh, once you're out, you're out. Okay. So the only way for these people to get back in is to be elected. But these people, so these people are trying to hold on to the power. They're not trying, it's not about elections anymore for them. And so several times he's uh, been caught uh, meeting with heads of state from other countries or their subordinates, their, their ministers. Uh, he was with the Aga Khan and he was there when Trudeau was there. I mean, this is a whole globalist elitist order of weirdos that just can't seem to take a hint. You know, they just can't seem to take a hint. And so, so dismantling this Iran nuclear weapons program, the... <laughs> These guys, they're lying through their teeth. The bald face lying. Oh, this one prevents the program. No, this it, this makes a, 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 a nuclear weapon. Uh, Iranians possessing the nuclear weapon a certainty. Everybody knows that, and I knew it the very first time they said, "Well, this deal is going to allow them to enrich uranium." Okay, so uranium comes in a couple of different forms. You have uranium two thirty eight and uranium two thirty five. Okay, the unstable version of weapons grade version is uranium-235. The most abundant source of uranium is uranium-238. That's what it is when it's mined. So you have to essentially break off a couple of uh, uh, molecules to get it down to refine it into uranium-235. And it has to have like a 99% purity or whatever, okay, for it to be used in a weapon, okay? So you don't put uranium, you don't gasify uranium and put them in centrifuges. <laughs> The only reason you do that is to purify it and turn it in, turn the 238 into uranium-235. That's the only reason why you do it is to make it a weapons-grade uranium. So it is going to be used for nuclear weapons. The uranium is going to be used for nuclear weapons. There's no other, you don't need to enrich uranium to use it for medical, iso, to, to get medical isotopes out of it. And you don't need it in those amounts. And you don't need to build uh, uh, centrifuge centers inside of mountains to enrich the uranium. And you don't need information on how to actually build a bomb. And all of the, having all of these things connected. And now we have these liberals who are, who are playing with fire, okay? Because if they think that they're safe from those people that they're dealing with in that region of the world, they're mistaken. They are, they are hugely mistaken. Those people will end them the minute they are no longer useful. John Kerry is apparently the dumbest uh, statesman ever to not have figured this out. So what an idiot. And this is not the first time this guy has acted this way in a treasonous fashion. Like, like, and you don't have to get mad at me for saying that the guy's a traitor because there's a number of people that are saying, no, this guy is like a piece of shit. He's a traitor. There's a number of people saying it. So, so you can get mad at everybody else or whatever you want, but the guy is obviously not acting in the interest of the United States and neither should he be now that he is no longer holding a position in the government. Yet here we are having to have discussions about stuff that he's saying to other people in other governments in other parts of the world. And he's no good, and he thinks he knows, he's one of these liberals that thinks he knows what he's doing, but he's a shit show. So beat it, John Kerry, get out. You're gone. I'll tell you what, man. So here's one for you. Detroit radio station bans Kanye West music over his support of President Trump. 
Okay, so typically, if you were going to ban his music, you would just quietly do it. You just quietly not play it. Because to actually come out and say, we're, we're going to ban something, actively seek to ban it, uh, no. No. That's where I call BS. <laughs> I'm not saying that the man deserves in any respect his music to be played, ever, anywhere. But to have someone actively go out and seek to do damage to your brand and your music and the ability for your music to make money, uh, that's a lawsuit, you guys. And that's how you get sued, by somebody who has money to definitely keep you in court for a long time. So say goodnight to your stupid little radio station there, Detroit. Just saying. Just saying. Doesn't seem like, uh, doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of people thinking with their thinking caps. <laughs> it, Muslims are trying to put up more mosques. Irish Town objects, saying, this is not Mecca. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, so, that's their whole plan. They're going to put up all these mosques everywhere. Yeah, mosque, 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 mosque. But these people don't even believe that. They're their own religion. That's not what this whole thing's about. They don't even believe that religion. They, <laughs> yeah, they don't even believe it. It's not even real. They know it's not real. They know, they, <laughs> I'd love to go into this, okay? But it's frivolous. It would be frivolous for me to go through it because the end result of it is, a, is that there are, the basis for the whole thing is actually based on, it's like their basis for their supposed religion is stuff that actually has been known historically. But they go and make it like, well, no, we knew that in advance. We have four knowledge. Well, okay. So, like, the, the Middle East is in shambles, okay? Did you foresee that coming? I mean, I'm just saying. You know, if you're going to start talking about how you got some foreknowledge and you're foreseeing things, well, I, you know what? You're, you're going to have a hard time convincing me that, you, that it's to any of your benefit. So that leads to me to believe that it's not accurate, what you're saying. So. Like I said, I'd like to go into a whole thing on this whole, this deal, because you would probably be like, oh, gee whiz, what is this? And maybe at some point I will. Maybe I will. And maybe we'll all get big yucks out of it and laugh a lot, because I'm not, I'm not talking about laughing at the people, okay? Because there are a couple of things that those people believe that are legitimate. They're legitimate, okay? And I don't blame them. They've been at war in that region for thousands of years, okay? But I want you to take notice of the fact that every time they commit violence, it's, it's planned. Every time they overthrow somebody, that's like, okay, you get, to, you get to reign for a while as the prince or the king or the whatever, and then we kick you out. Then you're done. They just, they just arbitrarily just look at each other like, yeah, okay, he's done. Yep, that's, that's, all, that's what they do. That's what the whole region has been doing for thousands of years. So, yeah, it's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing. But they made all of their own problems, you see. They've made all of their own problems. And they should be the ones to clean it up and decide one day that, you know what, maybe uh, this isn't the best thing to just continue doing. Just, up, up, just taking what's stable and destroying it. Oh, well, we have to destroy it. Yeah. Maybe just take a break. Do you ever think about that? Just take a break. You got, all can agree on destroying stuff. Why don't you all agree to work together? You know what I'm saying? Because already, you're already in agreement on a lot of things. You're just not in agreement in a way that's going to benefit you. You know, maybe, maybe then it wouldn't be such a big deal for you to like stay where you, where you are and not move around the whole world. You know what I mean? You're not, no one is entitled to immigrate, even if you're in a shitty shithole of a country. There's no, there's no, you have to, you have to help us. No, we don't. No, we don't. Nobody has to help you. And in fact, if we don't help you, you'll solve the problem yourself. I guarantee that. So more on that at some point in the future, probably. Yeah. So I didn't want to get too far into all of these BS le leakers and all of their, uh, you know, the special counsels and all that stuff. It's just, it's hilarious though. Cause it's like, Oh, we're going in there. We're going to find this. We're going to do that. We're going to do the same old routine. And we, we don't have to ruin people. We'll just ruin them. No, no, it's not going to work. 
So another thing that happened a couple of days, over the last couple of days, is Michelle Obama. Apparently she thinks herself, she calls herself the forever first lady. So when I heard, when I saw the video of her saying it, she knew it was wrong when she said it. She knew, she knew <laughs> that people were not going to be accepting it. So it's almost like someone put her up to it. You know, and you have the predictive backlash because people are going, hold on there. No, you get, you get to be called the first lady while you're there. And when you're not, you're the former and you're gone. There is no forever first lady. You're not a queen. You're not a princess. You're, I mean, this is like borderlining on some weird psychosis. Okay. <laughs> people like Barry smoked a lot of crack. Okay. And I got to tell you, I think probably anyone who was around him probably did too. Lots of cocaine, lots of everything. And you can see that it's had an effect on them because it's like they get to the highest office of the land and the first thing they want to do is steal stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, let's give all the school children ghetto-ass lunches. <laughs> you get beats today, kid. Oh. Little Tommy's, little Tommy, little Tommy's parents pack him a lunch and he has a good, he has a good lunch. Not for very long. That's because that's cause little Tommy's parents are rich. Not for long. They were ghetto. Like, like they were hood. They, they took hood straight to the White House and then they, it, it's like they had an old ass recliner chair that was just nasty and they like, I mean, they acted like they won the lottery. You know what I mean? They had, oh, you know what? We got to move because we won the lottery. Get to the highest office in the land, become the most powerful man in the world, leader of the free world, and you move your old nasty ass recliner chair <laughs> into the White House. Now, this never happened, okay? But this is, I'm just, this is me describing what my own personal estimation of what the Obama presidency was like. <laughs> it was like, they have all of the presidential limos that are, you know, solid limos, bulletproof, all that stuff. But you want to drive your beater, your regular beater, to the White House. And that's what you want to drive around. That's what, they're, that's what the Obama presidency was like. Which was a complete embarrassment, by the way. It's a complete embarrassment. So he gets all these other people, like, hey, watch this. I'm going to steal all this money. Now, don't think that we don't know where the money went. We do. We know where the money is. And when you see, like, funny things happening at banks in Asia, yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah. We know where that money is. We know the account numbers. We know, we know where it went, who it went to, how it was funneled. If it bought weapons for terrorists, we know. <laughs> Those are things you can't hide. You think you can, but you can't. Because people know. Not only do does our intelligence agencies know about it? Other intelligence agencies know about it. And the people on the ground, they compare notes all the time. Because it matters to them. It creates dangerous situations. I mean, they could be running uh, weapons into an, an, into an area, an operational area, that would then be used against them, against the people on the ground. And so you don't think those people on the ground are keeping track? I guarantee you they are. Eyes on, man. Eyes on. What about the Jason Bourne running around, man? You can't do it. You can't. You, those guys are going to want to know where those weapons are, where that money is. I'm just saying. I tell you what, there are a number of Democrats that I just would like to not see any longer in office. There's just a, there's just a whole slew of them. And they're all a bunch of old weirdos. They're, they're old weirdos. Just old, weird bag of bones. And they're like, we're going to dominate the world. No, you're not. My goodness, man. It's like you're at, that, you're at the age of retirement. When you're at the age of retirement, it's not time to just take over the world. Well, we're going to make all this money. We're going to stay in power. And we're going to have all the authority. <laughs> yeah, you're going to need all that power to mow your lawn. You know, trim the grass, work in the garden. You know, stuff that retired people do. Play board games, arts and crafts. That's what you're going to need the power for and the money. We're going to play so many. We're going to, we're going to play so many arts and crafts. That's what these people remind me of. These liberals, these old liberals that have been there for decades. So they remind me, oh, I'm just going to keep going. Just keep going. Why, dude? Why? You know what I mean? The world isn't going to put you on a t-shirt. They're not going to be like, this guy was a hero. I mean, unless you do something like pretty spectacular. Okay. They're not going to be like, 
you're not going to become some some historical figure. Especially if, I mean, I guess if you're breaking the law, that's one way to become a historical figure. But geez. So there it is. Thanks for joining me uh, on episode 34. More to come. Sorry, I took a week off, uh, did some stuff that was important. And now I'm back. And come to find out nothing really super terrible happened. So we're good. We're good. I'm good. You're good. And we're all good. So we'll see you next time for episode 35. It will definitely be an incredible episode. Thanks for being here. Hit me up on Patreon slash uh, Childrick. Patreon.com slash Childrick. Throw some coins in there, man. You know, just throw 50 cents in there, whatever. I don't care. You know, you can find me in all other forms of media. Um, you can follow, subscribe if you want. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. You can find this content in HD, full stereo, the best. The best stereo experience of this podcast on YouTube. Hit me up on YouTube at Children of the Age.